Hello everyone. Today I complete my reflections on the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Since Easter Sunday, we have been reading the accounts of Jesus' post-resurrection appearances to his followers. During his appearances, Jesus offered them peace, helped them recall the scriptures and prophecies made by him on his death and resurrection, dissipated all their fears and reassured them of his presence. On the fortieth day, he made his last appearance to them and before his ascension, he promised to send them the Holy Spirit. He had also promised them on the eve of his crucifixion that he would not leave them orphans. He told them that the Father would send the Helper, the Holy Spirit, who would be with them forever. Hence, on the 50th day after his resurrection, Jesus' promise was fulfilled. The Holy Spirit came and filled the followers of Jesus. It was absolutely essential for his followers to be filled with the Spirit of God. Once they were filled with the Holy Spirit, they overcame their timidity. They began to preach with great power and boldness. They converted many people and worked many miracles without wealth and with no weapon, but empowered by the Holy Spirit, they became dynamic witnesses. Friends, St. Paul is one of the early believers to be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. The influence of the Holy Spirit is best reflected in his preaching, writings and life. In all his letters to the early churches, he stressed the importance of the indwelling presence of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer. Because he believed that it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit whereby the believer can overcome his sinful disposition and live a life of holiness. Friends, today's second reading is taken from his letter to the churches in Galatia. Galatia was a small country and a part of the Roman Empire at the time of Paul. Some scholars believe that Galatia was probably the most difficult mission for Paul because many of the members of these churches were Gentiles and they were generally superstitious and worshipped pagan gods. When they became Christians, they were expected to leave behind their old customs of idol worship, rituals, astrology, etc. But the Galatians had absorbed their pay, former pagan worship traditions into a Christian faith as well. So, a small group of Jews within the church who were unhappy with what was going on stared their members against Paul and his teachings by telling them that they must keep certain Jewish laws and practices. They spoke against Paul and began to cause trouble for him. Many turned from Paul and believed the new teachers. As a result, the churches were beginning to split into racial factions. They began to engage in destructive conflict among themselves. They were provoking and challenging one another. Paul, who was at Ephesus at the time, was deeply grieved to hear about the problems and wrote the letter. Friends, in today's section of the letter, Paul called on the Galatians to live a spirit-filled life. What does spirit-filled life mean? Spirit-filled life means a life filled with Christ. It is not something which happens to us only once, either at baptism or confirmation or marriage or ordination or at your prayer time. It does not happen automatically, but rather occurs when the believer actively, consciously, deliberately, happily and constantly chooses to walk in the spirit of the gospel of Jesus. However, as it is hard to walk in the Spirit, St. Paul enjoins the believers to yield themselves to God and persistently seek Him to empower them with the gifts or virtues of the Spirit. In speaking of the coming of Messiah, Prophet Isaiah told us that He will give us seven gifts of the Spirit. 
wisdom, understanding, counsel, fortitude, knowledge, piety and fear of the Lord. Based on the teaching of St. Thomas Aquinas, the Church states that these gifts belong in their fullness to Christ. They complete and perfect our virtues. They make us docile in readily obeying divine inspirations. That being so, Paul says that these seven gifts enable the believers to say no to or avoid sins such as immorality, impurity, lust, idolatry, sorcery, hatreds, rivalry, jealousy, outburst of fury, acts of selfishness, dissensions, factions, occasions of envy, drinking about orgies and the like. And in contrast, say yes and generate love, joy, peace, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Paul calls these fruits of the Holy Spirit. Friends, this is not simply a message intended for the Galatians or believers of his time alone. It is a message intended for you and me. If the Holy Spirit was essential to Jesus before he began to minister, and if it was essential to the early disciples of Jesus, it is absolutely essential that all of us be filled with the Spirit of God as well. We need the Holy Spirit to live in us, inspire us, anoint the words we speak. We need the Spirit to help us live a holy life and serve and love others effectively. We need the Holy Spirit to help us to be pleasing to both God and man. Therefore, we shall pray today and always that the Lord may fill us with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Come, Holy Spirit, I need you. Come, Holy Spirit, I pray. Come with your strength and your power. Come in your own special way. Come like a spring in the desert. Come to the weary of soul. Oh, let your sweet healing power Touch me and make me whole. O Holy Spirit, I adore you, I praise you, and love you with all my heart. O Holy Spirit, I give you my heart, and I offer my ardent thanksgiving for my life, my family, my friends, my job, my health, and all the grace which you never cease to bestow on me despite my unworthiness. Amen. O Holy Spirit, grant me the gift of the fear of God and penetrating light, that I may recognize how greatly sin offends your infinite majesty, and may fear and most carefully avoid all that is displeasing to you. Amen. O Holy Spirit, grant me the gift of piety, so that I may serve you always with in increased fervor, follow confidently your holy inspirations, and observe your divine precepts with greater fidelity. Amen. O Holy Spirit, grant me the gift of knowledge, so that I may know the things of God 
and enlightened by your holy teaching, may walk without deviation in the path of eternal salvation. Amen. O Holy Spirit, grant me the gift of fortitude, so that I may overcome courageously all the assaults of the devil and all the dangers of this world which threaten the salvation of my soul. Amen. O Holy Spirit, grant me the gift of counsel, so that I may choose what is more conducive to my spiritual advancement and may discover the wiles and snares of the devil. Amen. O Holy Spirit, grant me the gift of understanding, so that I may apprehend the divine mysteries and by contemplation of heavenly things, detach my thoughts and affections from the vain things of this miserable world. Amen. O Holy Spirit, grant me the gift of wisdom, so that I may rightly direct all my actions, referring them to God as my last end, so that having loved Him and served Him in this life, I may have the happiness of possessing Him eternally in the next. Amen. O Holy Spirit, infuse into me a love of perfect goodwill. Make me love not only those who love me, but also those who hurt me, disappoint me, betray me, persecute me, and hate me. Amen. O Holy Spirit, giver of all good gifts, grant me also the special favors for which I pray. If they be for your honor and glory and for my well-being. Amen. Glory be to the Father. Glory be to the Son, glory be to the Spirit, now and forever. Amen. God bless you.